the Car Casters on Mythic Adventure Car episode. Casters. Is this the third one we're doing? I think so. It sounds like the third one. We're currently in between uh, Edmonton and Red Deer on our way to Calgary. And uh, there's a lot of fuck all to see. It's the prairies. It's relaxing and boring. Those that can be good or bad things. So we want to talk a bunch about Car Captive Sakura. Yes, because um, for all two people which will be listening, possibly four, mm-hmm. um, I've just had this huge urge to watch and read this manga and everything. And um, for those of you who do not know and who are a fan of it, um, there is a new arc called uh, the Clear Card Captain Sakura Clear Cards. Yeah, and this is important because the, the manga was thought all but done. Yep. So it was completed back in 1996. And then uh, 20 years later, a sequel. Yep. That, it, there's a lot of that happening, Star Wars. It is. It's really Dragon exciting. Ball. And uh, so it's, I thought it was just a joke because literally I was trying to find the manga. Long story short, I have to um, buy the omnibuses again. Because I don't, I don't own any of my current ones. Which bad timing for this urge to happen. So when I found out they have this arc and it, it's released um, a new chapter once a month, and I'm like, wow, wow, are they serious? And they're that's where the anime is going to be basing off of it too. So there's going to be an anime version as well. So I'm like, wow, 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 wow. I need to uh, go back and stuff. Uh, I can, can I swear? Oh, I don't give a shit. I swear all the time. Okay, I so... Sometimes I swear just to remind myself that this is a thing I can do. Oh, wonderful. Fuck! I'm just like, fuck, I can swear. God damn. Anyway, um... So... <laughs> too hot vet. Oh, yeah. I hate this person. Sorry, we just saw a really nice car, and they're just really, really cool. Anyway, um... <laughs> that was quite distracting. Um... Oh yeah, Card Captain Sakura. So I'm trying to rewatch the episodes, and uh, I need. To, I'm going to start watching them back at the beginning. But uh, the point of my fucking story. Wow, I really lost my train of thought. That fucking car made me lose my train of thought. Did you write down what you want to talk about? Let me get Why don't my. Why you phone. write things down? I did write it down. Give me a second. It's so the sun is beaming at such an angle that I have to like hold my phone upwards so it doesn't hit the shine. Alright, I was going to talk about uh, the clear card arc. Um, I also am going to talk about the movies. Okay, so I, I'm, um, the clear card arc uh, is basically what happens at the, literally at the very end of the manga. So for a huge spoiler if you haven't read it, which I don't know who hasn't now, but whatever. Um, basically, it's after Sakura and Sharon get together, something other myster- else mysterious happens. Her cards start to, to become transparent, and she gets a new key. And um, But I don't know if it's actually the the same key as before that was transformed. It looks like it's just a completely new key altogether. Um, I don't know much of the story left yet because it only started in June and since it's monthly there's only been two chapters so far. So I don't know. It could either go really cool and just like a a short arc, something cool. Um, My thoughts on what I'm going to assume it is since Clamp has this thing about having to fucking link everything together lately, I bet you anything that um, in its shitty Subasa Reservoir Chronicles, where they did that other universe with garbage story, with the garbage story that links to all everything together, and which started off fantastic but just fell flat hard. Um, if you like it, that's fine, but I just am not impressed at all. No, if you like it, you're not allowed to listen to this podcast. Um, and um, 
so what they did in Reservoir Chronicles, or Super, yeah, 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 um, is that um, the Sharon and Sakura are there since they're fucking their own parent, their their own parents, trying to break through this repetitive cycle of fucking being captured by Evo Cloud Reed's brother, who's a love of the time witch that is actually in love with Cloud Reed, and Cloud Reed knows he fucked up, so he kept the card, kept the Sakura world realm alone, so he could uh, try to fix shit in this universe and shit. I'm not making that up. Um, the, they needed a strong magic source, so they, um, they briefly like saw this window of the world of Card Captain Sakura that we all know and love and all she really did was she said I heard you needed some help here's my cloud stuff I no longer need it anymore so I'm going to assume with that being said that this clear card arc is a way to teach Sakura to either use this, this new staff to summon the cards without actually summoning cards or to teach her how to summon cards without a staff because she so far has not actually released the staff from that new key so that could very well be it um what's it called but I really have no idea I really don't all I know is that there has been an uproar of people saying do not do not, for the love of fucking god, um, link, link, this, it, link, this, link this shit. Like, don't give me that angst bullshit. Like, da 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 da. So, I'm hoping it's not. Um, or, like, not to make it bland. Like, like that fucking, fucking Subasa garbage. You know what else was fucking bland as shit? That first Card Captors movie. That movie is trash. I told wow. you not to watch it. You, so, uh, like I just said three seconds ago, um, I, I really wanted to get into it, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to watch that first movie because I can't remember for the life of me. You did warn me. You warned me. Do not watch that. It's garbage. I'm like, I really cannot remember anything of that first movie. Was it really that forgettable? Oh, yes. Absolutely it was. I, that biggest piece of fucking shit... It, it's fucking awful. It's terrible. If anyone does not remember, do not watch it again like I did. But if you're going to, to do it anyway, you're going to see how fucking terrible it is. Like, I sat there bored to tears. It's just basically, like... It's just basically trying to show off one card throughout the whole fucking movie. Out of all the cards they could have used and could have experimented with, they chose four, four, four cards. Jump, which she uses on a daily basis. Fly, which she uses on a daily basis. Windy, which she uses on a daily basis. And the new card, Arrow, which she caught in the first two minutes of the movie and used in the last two minutes. Thanks! Fucking thanks! Like I gave a shit. And, um... For the premise of someone who doesn't give a shit to watch the movie again. The premise of yeah. someone who doesn't give a shit? Uh, no. Meet I mean, <laughs> Shut up. Um, basically the movie is about, uh, first two minutes they capture the card. Then, um, Sakura and Tomoyo, they magically, literally magically won a trip to Hong Kong. Because the magic, the, the reason she won was from the magic of this mysterious woman from Hong Kong. Um, so they went during their winter break. They go in the trip for four to go to Hong Kong. So she goes with her friend and her brother and her brother's lover to fucking Hong Kong, and she finds a mysterious presence there which keeps summoning her and this mysterious presence is this fucking sorceress well, it's the soul of a dead sorceress who was in love with Cloud Reed and doesn't realize that he's dead but when fucking Shakura Sharon is trying to tell the spirit he's dead she doesn't fucking listen causes fucking shit to happen 
until Sakura figures out that, oh, she was probably in love with him. And tells him, I know it's sad, but he's dead and so are you, basically. And she's like, oh, and dies. I'm like, oh, good. Can we talk about how many problems Cloud Reed's dick has caused? <laughs> he's caused so many problems with this goddamn dick. And then he just kind of sat there. You know what he did? He literally sat there one day. He's like, my fucking God, what's wrong with me? What the fuck is wrong with me? So he made Yue and he made uh, Kiribaris. And he's just like, okay, I'm going to go die now. Which is just going back to the card cap, uh, the Subasa world. Uh, you guys take care of shit here. They're like, what do you mean? You, you just can't die. You're what? a boss. You're a fucking... Um, is this uh, Ariel part of him too? Or? Yeah, so what happened? So he said he caused a lot of shit. So he wanted to no longer be the most powerful magician because clearly he can't handle being the most powerful magician in this fucking game. He I, can't handle this shit. I argue the magician part is not the part he's bad at. The part he's bad at is stopping causing is causing problems with his dick. You know, he's good at that. No, oh, he's but that's a good bad at skill to be good at. Um, so what he did was he said, Okay, I caused a lot of shit in all these other realms with these all these other Sakuras and sure. I have shit. caused a lot of problems. For all these innocent fucking people. So he's like, I have to save at least one fucking world. So he saved this one by creating Kiro and Yue. Splitting his soul in two between Ariel and Fujitaka, but he couldn't split himself properly, which is why in the manga, Ariel did those tests so Sakura could split his magic in half properly. Hey, crazy question. Maybe I'm a brain fart. Who's Fujitaka again? Sakura's dad. Right, right, right. Yeah, so he tried to split himself in two because he thought he could split his magic. Yeah, okay, okay. Continue. But it didn't work properly. Like, he split a portion of it. That's why Sakura does have magic, and her father does a little bit. But Ariel is the one who possesses the memories and stuff like that, even though he's his own being. So Ariel's like, well, fuck, I don't want this. That's why he, uh, in the manga, he made Sakura transform all the cards so her magic was strong enough so she could split his power in half. That way he was no longer the most powerful. He wouldn't have to carry that burden, things like that. I feel bad for Ariel, actually. Who would want that burden? Do you know what I mean? So as he split himself and poor Ariel is, you know, dealing with this shit, he goes by, goes back to Subasa, and he's like, fuck, I fucked up shit here. Uh, well, I guess I'll try to fix shit, and then he got his fucking killed. Oh, good. Glad he was useful. Um, so many people might be raging, by the way, with my synopsis. Oh, yeah, it's okay, they're wrong. Subasa Reservoir Chronicle, Chronicles, it's terrible. It's like the, the clamp version of Kingdom Hearts. You know what else is terrible? Kingdom Hearts. Like... I'm going to disagree with that. It's not... It's... It's... It was good initially. Honestly, it was. Are and we that's talking exactly, about Tsubasa? Uh, we're talking about both. Okay. They were very good in the beginning. It's just when they felt the need to be edgy and complicated and unnecessarily more complicated to me they're like oh now our story is like very complex no assholes you just both made the fucking story in it's just confusing and weird and you made yourself have plot holes yeah that everywhere. does describe both it's really unfortunate you know how much i wish like the first kingdom hearts and was just an evil dude that they killed and then they ended happy there and then they can decide later to make a sequel instead of it being the first start of an epic garbage story. Right? Like, no, oh, it was stupid. I want to kind of switch gears here and talk a little bit more about games because I know there's a summer day, summer games done quick. And stuff yeah. Like that. I didn't get to watch a lot of anything to, yet, to be quite honest. They're good at archiving it, both yeah. on their Twitch channel and on their YouTube page. Um, what's it called? Oh, what I did want to bring up though, uh, there's actually two here, they kind of go hand in hand, so let's talk about that for a bit. Um, Rival Skulls characters, and you said, you just said Karn from Street Fighter V. Oh, yeah. You said you know, your, if, if I just left it, that you know exactly what you were to talk about. Yeah, so here's the funny thing Karin is kind of like Harley Quinn in that she was introduced 
in material that was supposed to supplement the main canon, and she kind of migrated over to the main canon and has become super important. Oh, really? So, Karin was actually in a Sakura-based manga, and she was Sakura's rival, her fierce rival, right? Yeah. And then they eventually transplanted her into Street Fighter Alpha 3, where she was Sakura's rival again. Um... But you know, she kind of softened her edges. They like she was trying to get, she was trying to beat Sakura after losing to her, and she does manage to beat her. But claims that Sakura is the better fighter. There's his chance, and she kind of mellowed out. She's become this nice person. And in Street Fighter V, Karin is one of the characters. Sakura is not, but in this, Karin is super important to the events of the game. In her own story, she's looking for Oro, one of the fucking best fighters in the Street Fighter universe. And she, like, beats Dalsim, who is no joke to beat. And she's displaying a bunch of Mishima-level techniques and abilities and know-how. And in the st main story that they released recently, she's super important to the story. And she's one of the main organizers against Shadowloo. And what's cool as shit, there's a moment where Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li, Guile, and Karin, or Dalsim, I think it was Dalsim, not Guile, and Karin all put their hands together in like that cool big heroes moment that they're gonna go stop oh. Shadow Loon. And I'm like, what? Karin gets that and Sakura didn't? Wow. That is awesome because I like Karin way more than I like Sakura. So I'm like, this is like if in the next Street Fighter Ryu wasn't in it, Ken was and he saved the day. Wow, that's actually, I didn't know any of that shit. That's actually quite crazy. And speaking of Karin, she, uh, she got a new stage, uh, the Kanzuki Beach Resort. Uh, which is tournament illegal because the water obscures feet and stuff on the ground. Good job there, Dimps and Capcom. But uh, what's interesting about this stage is that there are two rival schools characters in it, Tiffany and Hinata. And rival schools... They don't even go to the same school, what the fuck? There's, there was always some controversy as to whether or not rival schools are part of Street Fighter. They they introduce stuff like Batsu admiring Ryu, and then later game devs say, no, it's actually its own universe. And then others are like, but it's not. And then Kyosuke's in Capcom versus SNK2. And then he's not in the Street Fighter Alpha 3 remake, which put all most of the Capcom characters from that game in it. So I'm like, what the what the fuck? I don't I don't so understand. Where's rival schools? I would love to see in the next whatever the next revision of Street Fighter 5 is, which I hope takes place after Street Fighter 3, because this story kind of wrapped up everything leading up to it. Oh, I see. Um, I'm hoping the next arc takes place after because I wanted to see things after because Gil, after Gil's defeat by either Alex or Yun and Yang, maybe both in the canon, he prophesies that big bad shit is happening in the world. And one of the new characters in Street Fighter V, Mikali, shows up only when the world is in need of warriors to consume them for some mysterious pers uh, purpose. So you could easily say he appeared again later in the future. Uh, but what I was going to say is, I hope there's Rival Schools characters in the next big revision of Street Fighter V, because... You know what was I, fun about Rival Schools? Not to interrupt you. No, 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 it's okay, interrupt away, I interrupt you all the time. Um, no, like, what, I was going to go hand in hand. What would be so nice if they did bring it out is because Rival Schools, like, the characters in the majority of the schools... They have such big characters themselves. There are some good designs. That's and cute. some garbage designs. Saki. The violin oh, girl. Fucking those two suck. But like Akira, she's fucking awesome. If I could pick one character in Rival Schools to be in Street Fighter V, it would be uh, Akira Easy. She's fucking cool. If I could pick two. I don't know if I have no idea what people think. I don't know if people think she's boring or whatever, but I think she's very cool. I think she's very unique. Um, in the cancelled Capcom game, Capcom Fighting All-Stars, which takes place in the Street Fighter universe and has characters like Hagar and Strider for some reason, Batsu and the Kira were in it. Although that game ended up not panning out to anything. Oh, that's too bad. Um, I liked her outfit in it because she had her full biker garb, but not the helmet. Yeah. Like, she still had the coat on, she wasn't revealing her tank top, yeah. but she still had her face revealed, which I like because... I like the the spiky coat with but seeing her face, right? Yeah. It's well, it's because cool. it's because she has such a cool face and such a nice hairstyle. Yep. It's not terribly long, but it's not terribly... It's like shoulder length. But anyway, um, and just her face in general, it's not. Um, 
how do I describe it? It's not terribly like soft, but it's not like hard either. It's just right there. Like it's it's, it's really nice. She reminds it's me a, a lot nice of contrast. She reminds me a lot of Asuka from Tekken. Yeah. And I like Asuka. If there's a character I could steal from Tekken to put in the Street Fighter universe, I think it'd be Asuka. She, well, apparently Street Fighter and, uh, and Tekken are in the same universe anyway. Yeah, I, Akuma with story. And we should mention how friend of the show, uh... I, I should can't. mention how a friend of the show talks about how broken Akuma is. And, uh, I've been watching videos, and he's definitely right. Akuma looks super broke in Tekken 7, like... Easy confirms off a simple jab into big combos and some death combos. I'm like, hmm, hmm. They might have to balance them out a bit. Yeah. Um, you know what was cool to see though? Like, um, I was gonna say Ravis, but shit. Uh, seeing the Tekken characters in Street Fighter. The like, Tekken characters look super good in Street Fighter style. Yeah, Street they Street Fighter 4 style, they looked super good. Yeah, they did. Like, they did a really good job to stylize them. Like, Kazuya, with all his scars, and he yep. looked like a fucking zombie. Like, not not in a bad way, but, like, he just because he was... You can see he's worn, but yep. he's still... Um, like, he still had his peak. I like, had, he just looks menacing, do yep. you know what I mean? I had issues with Street Fighter Cross Tech, and... But the Tekken characters look so good in Street Fighter 4 style. But the Tekken style is good too, and the Kuma really looks good in it. So, okay, so uh, we had a phone call come into the car, folks, which may have interrupted some stuff. Basically, we're talking about how cool Street Fighter characters look in Tekken style and vice versa. So, um, Yeah, Akuma, he looks really good in Tekken character. So that gives us hope that, because um, remember, uh, when they made Street Fighter cross Tekken, it completely bombed um, afterwards, right? So yeah, for, the um, for Tarada good said, yeah, Tarada said, like right before that happened, though, he said he's been playing with the idea of doing his side of it, but it's Tekken never, it, yeah, but it's never been actually released yet because I'm assuming, firstly, since that fucking bot, he wanted to wait a little bit, mm-hmm. push that aside for the moment. And I bet you what he was doing, because clearly it shows with Akuma, he's worked, he's clearly still working on it. He wants to make sure it can transition well. And I think really, to be quite honest, Akuma was the test. Yeah. So he bullshitted him into the story. He's now canon. So now they can go ahead and sue with their, their project of Tekken Cross Street Fighter. I bet you anything that's what it is. Especially since Tekken 7 is supposedly... Um, the end of the, 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 it's the end of, uh, Yeah, it says end of Mishima arc. So, um, I bet oh. you that's what... Uh, someone's dying. <laughs> speaking, speaking of ending arcs, uh, how much do you care about Guilty Gear spoilers? Uh, no, I don't care. So I watched all of the Guilty Gear X Art Revelator story, and the big arc they were building since the beginning of Guilty Gear is kind of resolved now. What's the big arc? Soul and his old girlfriend. Who's his old girlfriend? Um, what, what was her name? I forget her name. Uh, long story short, uh, lots of Guilty Gear spoilers, especially for Revelator. Soul, that girl, and that man were scientists, and uh, they created the Gear Project. And Soul was the first prototype Gear, but something happened in the the, the woman. Oh, I don't know, I remember her name. She uh she she died and Saul blames that man and that man had his own reasons for doing it to save the world from a terrible threat that was kind of realized in Revelator as well. And uh, long story short, Jacko, the character Jacko, actually turns out that man managed to save that uh, save Saul's girlfriend, split her into two parts, Clowry. Uh, one of them was Jacko. The other half was what resided in Justice, which is why Saul is so angstrid, because he had to kill Justice, who he knew deep down was really her. Um, Justice was revived and was going to destroy the world, and um, but Jacko was created to merge with Justice and create the make herself whole again and save her. That was that man's plan the whole time, because she, uh, he knew that she loved Saul. And that happened. Uh, oh. it, a lot of things happened in that story, but that's the main thing that happened. And, 
uh, it was actually really cool. There was a moment where Sol, Kai, and Sin were all fighting the the main evil woman, uh, although her backstory is way too complicated. Uh, let's just say she's a time witch. And, uh, okay. um, and the, they were all fighting, like, there was a big fight involving all of them, and Chips Enough has become seriously cool. He's the president of his own nation, but he's been investigating all the evils in the world and secretly giving everyone information. I know, I've always liked Chip. Chip What's is cool? super awesome, actually. And, 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 wait, 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 wait. So Chip is fucking um, uh, Edge from, from Final Fantasy IV. In, in a way, his nation is still very small. Oh god, he's Edge. And he has ninjas working for him. Oh god, he's Edge! <laughs> and he goes around letting his ninjas take care of this shit while he goes around. And take care of the real problems. Yeah, and he... See? He's Edge. But the story kind of made a lot of characters who you wouldn't think were cool seem very cool and heroic. Like Zappa, who isn't playable yet. And Robokai got a huge amount of development. What? Why? Robokai! Why? That's and it was cool development, too! No, that doesn't sound cool. I know, but it was! He got to fucking do a cool sacrifice. He got better. He's a robot. <laughs> Tell me a couple characters I give a shit about, like Dizzy and uh, Kai and uh, fucking... Okay, so... They didn't explain any. They didn't explain any more of why Kai is apparently a gear. Although during that big fight with the main bad guy, Sol basically turns to Kai and says, "Yeah, yeah, uh, go, go keep, go keep that whatever from falling over." And Kai goes there. His, his eye turns into a gear eye again, and he lifts the whole thing by himself. And Sin looks at him. He's like, "What the fuck?" And Sol's like, "Sin, focus." So I'm wondering if Sol knows. Um, Kai knows Sol's name is Frederick, and I don't know how much Sol has told Kai of his past. Um, but Kai was there when he, Sol and that man were having a very heated discussion. Dizzy, sadly, did not play too big a role. She did appear. It's implied that she was off doing things for the kingdom and helping people. So when the kingdom was under attack by these big giant gear monsters, a lot of characters came together to defend Kai's kingdom, and one of them was Dizzy. Um, also, uh, uh, like Venom and uh, not Venom, uh, Zato and Millie and Slayer were all there too. And it was a pretty cool moment. Uh, other characters you care about. Jam didn't play too big a role in the story. She was mainly helping that new character, Kum, kind of uh, bring food to the Japanese colony because the Japanese colonists were being turned into gear monsters. Baikin played a big role in the story because uh, she was hired by Kum to protect the Japanese people and uh, it's implied Baikin did that for free because obviously she has certain interests in protecting her own kind. Yeah. Kum is that man, that big burly man who's like a tuner but he's really a robot being piloted by a little Korean girl. Uh, and uh, that character fascinates me because I don't know how they identify. Everyone refers to Kum, uh, to, to Kum in the male pronouns. I don't know if that girl made the robot suit because she wants to identify as male, or she just doesn't feel comfortable being in the outside world and talking to people. Kum fascinates me, but we didn't learn much about why Kum is a robot because all of and why Kum is being piloted by a woman who is the real Kum Jae. Um, it's simply it, 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 all, all of Coom's moments are Coom the robot. So that's interesting. Um, Jam didn't play too big a role. Uh, Johnny played a fairly big role, but yeah, not as big as a role he played in the last game story, which is funny because he wasn't playable there. May was mostly just stuck in the colony because she, she since she's Japanese, they didn't want her to turn into a gear monster. Oh, I see. Um, Zappa played a huge role because after he got relieved of his ghosts by Faust, he uh, he uh, did big research into. Um, oh, we're right. I read there already, uh, or maybe not. He did a bunch of research into paranormal uh, possession, and he developed a science around it. So they went to Zappa for expertise on how to deal with the problem. So he was involved. He was in the main control room of uh, Illyria for most of the story. Uh, and if he is ever playable again, I'm not sure what they're going to do with him. Does he get possessed with ghosts again? Because he's not possessed right now. Yeah. So, uh, other characters. Potemkin is Potemkin. He's doing what he's doing. Uh, what about, uh, uh, the one with the yo-yo? 
uh, Bridget. Yeah. Bridget has not been revealed in the XR timeline yet. A lot of people like Bridget and want to see him, but um, nothing yet. I would love to see Bridget again. Since everyone else is alive and well this far into the future, I'm assuming that he is too. Yeah. I'm fascinated to see what Bridget has decided for himself. He was trying to be manly, he was trying to be more like a man, but with a character like Coom and with certain... There are certain regressive elements in Guilty Gear's story, but certain progressive ones too. I kind of wonder what happened to Bridget. Maybe Bridget decided that uh, uh, his gender identity was not male. Maybe he's decided he's comfortable being a man who wears women's clothing. Yeah. I would love any of these things. Is, is Bridget still a bounty hunter? Because Jam still is. So. That's interesting. Um... But yeah, so if there is another update to Exard, I don't know what they're going to do. There are some loose ends, but uh, I think they're probably going to introduce the next villain there's even another arc to do. This current arc took the entire history of Guilty Gear to do, so... And uh, let's be honest, the uh, Guilty Gear story is garbage. It's terribly written. It, it, it's a lot like Tsubasa in a lot of elements. I just like it because there's characters I play as in a game, and they all have a story, right? Yeah. Well, and you have to connect to the characters, too. If you don't connect, I always find it very hard to, to like, like anything, and you're like, oh, okay. For sure, for sure. You can have this wonderful big plot, but if you can't get into it with something, like, it's like, eh, who cares? This is the Simple Gear issue. The first two seasons of that show, when you really think about it, there's nothing too special there. But the characters, at least the heroes, are all really likable and have real depth. And in season three, they kind of did a Slayer's Try thing where they tried to focus on some of the weak parts of the story and add additional layers. And I, like, I definitely see that the show's improved. But if you're gonna do one thing, if you can only do one thing right in a story, you make your characters likable. Yeah. If you can comp accomplish that, you're good. Um. Man, I wonder if it's still stormy in Edmonton, but we seem to have outraced any of the big cumulonimbus clouds. I see nothing but clear skies. It's clear this. skies and sun shining. My phone is apparently telling me there's a red deer, huge thunderstorms. Huh. Like there's a big lightning bolt on my phone. That's funny because we're not that far from red deer. But and sunny. I see nothing. I see nothing either. There's literally nothing. The sun is shining. Birds are tweeting. Like on their phones. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very nice. Um, speaking of the visuals, that's a perfect segue onto our next topic. Yeah. Um, another thing we we're going to talk about is um, visual and audio cues in games, but I don't quite remember what we were talking specifically we, about. We were talking about blind, the, the blind sympathy of the night run that Rom Scout did in Summer Games Done Quick. And oh, also stuff like... yeah! And then I talked about last, uh, a couple years ago, there was a blind super punch-out run, but since some of the boxers' moves don't use audio cues, the runner had no choice but to either guess or just take that hit because yeah. obviously he can't see. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I was bringing up as well, like, um, in the Hatsune Miku music games, I was like, oh man, I'm so good at this one song, I bet you I could play it without the music. So I'd mute it and just try to press the buttons uh, as I see them, but I'm like, I, I fucking can't do this shit. Yeah, because you're using the audio as much as you're using the visual. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, we reached right there and we're hungry, so uh, um, we're going to stop, get food, pee, do all that. No, it's still good and on gas. So. pee some more. Possibly pee a third time. Yep. Uh, so thanks for listening, folks.